thought it was Nicole Point. Okay. Here we go. Not as bad as Nicole Real. Here we go. Guys. Why is it 2.0? Because there's already one. All right. So on the front of your sheet, you've got these dots. And we kind of glazed over this, but I want to talk about it a little bit. If we're back in ancient Greece and we're able to arrange our little pebbles on the ground, we can get a one by one pebble, right? One row, one column, we're good to go. Or two by two, or three by three, or so on and so on and so on. Okay? So technically, n is an element of all positive numbers. All positive. And actually, John looked this up, and he was right, I was wrong. The whole number is according to that definition. Actually, I guess we should even say natural numbers, right? Because that only that discounts zero. Yeah. So. No, natural numbers are counting numbers. And, and counting numbers start at one. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it's natural numbers and whole numbers. No, it's not. Does natural numbers include zero? Yeah. Okay. Natural so then. Yeah, because integers are real numbers. Okay. So this is all positive integers, not including zero. Yes. Is that the answer? I had it backwards. Integers are a parent class of whole numbers. Whole numbers are just the positives and zero. So we've got this pattern, and you guys were asked to develop. You're asked to develop an equation for a of x. So we saw that s of n equals n squared. Does anyone have any problems with that? I do. OK, what's the problem? Why do we, I don't know, I just don't get it, understand it. But how we got that? Yeah. Like so all we do is we start putting rocks in the sand, and we put it in an even pattern. And we say, if this is our first case, it's one by one. If this is our second case, it's two by two. If this is our third case, three by three. So that's like, so there's, so it's not always that equation. It's like some specific. No, it's going to be whatever fits the sequence that we're working with. Today's sequence, one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five. What does S stand for? Sequence. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Then you're asked, well, what if you want to talk about the area of this thing? And we somehow get this equation ax equals x squared. And the question I want to ask you guys is, what is the difference and what's similar about these equations? What's the difference and what's the similarities? Any ideas? Big less. Well, the n and the x are just variables. So OK, they're practically the same, but there's a difference. A variable a choice. What did you come up with? They're both squared. They're both squared, so that's a similarity. Brittany? And it's representing the n's term while x is the side of the square. OK, kind of true, but doesn't this represent the number of points in this side? OK, so basically they're the same? They're kind of the same. Area is talking about area, but I think Well, they're both talking about perfect squares, which kind of gets to this area question. Yeah? Isn't ax equals x2 um, for measurement? Like it's set on the like centimeter squared. There's definitely centimeter squared. We can use this as measurement though too. Brennicky? And there's an element of positive integers where x could be all the numbers. There we go. It's the domain that's the difference here. It's the domain that's the difference. In an element of positive integers. Of positive integers. Here, x is an element of all real numbers. What I'm trying to say is, let's say we don't have a square that's a 3 by 3 perfect. What if we go, say, 2.5 by 2.5? Okay. We can't really represent that with little stones now. But we have a spot in between them that we can. And so we start transitioning from this very discrete kind of math where we're looking at just the first term, the second term, the third term, to any number, pi. Negative 10, 15, 14 and a half. Any of those numbers that we're going to talk about. Please excuse the interruption. Can I please have the following students to Ms. Work's room? Marco Romero, Francisco Zuniga, Gloria Mata, Brian Morales, and Eduardo Solis. Teachers, these students will be with me through the end of the day. Thanks. All right. 
So we're talking about different domains. We have different ways of representing similar ideas. Once discrete, we can draw the line for this one. And any point along that line, I can represent with this equation. I can find the area of any shape. So I'm no longer limited to just the positive integers. Any questions about that? Raul, where did I lose you? Is there a way to put this in the document? I'm not, I'm fine, I'll just see you go. Okay. Haley? I don't understand how you got the kx equals x squared. Okay, so the derivation of where that came from. Yeah. You understand where we got the n squared? I do. Okay, so if you look here, n equals 1, I get 1. n equals 2, I get 4. 3, 9. X is the next kind of logical step. Well, how do I account for these cases that I can't represent with this sequence, the first term, the second term? How do I account for the question of what is 1.5 squared? Okay, That broadens it so I can open it up to a, to a more general question of anywhere along this line I can find an output that matches. Okay, so like it could be like, like 1.5. Perfect. Okay. Yes. This is saying X can be any number I can think of. Could it be negative 10? Yeah, it's a real number, and it makes sense. Well, we'll get to that one in a second. Okay? Could it be pi? Sure, we can plug pi in there. I can definitely have something that's approximately the length of pi. Okay? So we can get that. Okay. There's a couple of questions in here I wanted to talk to you guys about. Wait, negative how, how do you do the triangular? We're not there yet. I have no idea. Negative 10. So A of negative 10. How do I represent that? Yeah? Um, isn't it just the negative, um, you can't do negative 10. Okay. So it's not so easy to think of a negative area. Are there applications where we could look at, say, negative 10 squared? You get 100? Yeah. Yeah, there are. There's these things called phasers in electrical engineering. Things called phases, and we start talking about imaginary numbers, and we've kind of alluded to them before. That said, it's a little bit above this class. So we don't have a good way to represent A of negative 10. But can we represent A of square root of 2? Can I represent A of square root of 2? Yeah. How? How could I draw a picture that represents that? Well, because uh, square root of 2 is an actual number. Okay, it's a number. It's about 1.4. We could just simplify. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we could say 1.4-ish by 1.4-ish. Mm -hmm. Or we could write the entire equation out and square it. We're going to get an area of 2. Okay, we can represent that. We can't using sequences and series. So why do we care about this? This is a way to help us take something that's discrete and basic and straightforward and try to expand it into a general equation that we can use for a lot of math, for any number we need to work with. Because numbers don't come in pretty little ones and twos and threes and fours. Really? Not always. Not in, not in the real world. Alright, so let's talk about the next one. On the next page you've got the triangular numbers. And here's your little hint. I didn't even get that far. Yeah, I don't even know what this is. So, I'm going to draw the dots up here. It is. Oh, like on our chart, there's five. Oh, do they go up to five? Yeah. 
Okay, well, anyway, it's good enough. S of n. 1, 3, 6, 8, 